Welcome. In this module, we're going to look at the second part of malware defenses. This is a very, very important uh, module. And there is now, in, because of the increased nature of attacks and the increased intensity of attacks and the increase in the number of vectors through which these attacks are happening, it could happen through your web browser. It could happen uh, through your system. It could happen through the edge of the network. The attack could happen through um, a phishing email, for example. Uh, there are so many ways in which, or it could, it could happen through a, uh, uh, a USB device or a removable device that you connect. Um, it could happen simply by browsing a website, which is a malicious website, um, on a known malicious DNS or domain. So it's very, very important to configure the malware defenses in an appropriate manner so that we have protection against all the attack vectors and then that our users are educated enough so that they are also aware of how to stay away from activities which will uh, which have the possibility of bringing in uh, inviting malware or causing or or being the door that is open for attacks to come in into the organization so we're talking about CSC8 which is critical security control number eight from CIS top 20 critical security controls. And we're on the foundational controls in the middle in gray. And we're talking about malware defenses. And this is the second part of the eighth control, which is titled malware defenses. 8.6 tells us centralize anti-malware logging. So whatever anti-malware protection you have, it could be on the edge in the next generation firewall. It could be through the antivirus solution. Um, or it could be through some other type of protection. Uh, for example, we had talked about the anti-ransomware protection, or it, this could also be the advanced malware protection solution, for example, which is, which is detecting the email uh, attacks through sandboxing. So what this control is telling us is that we must um, log the uh, such devices or software to event log servers for analysis and alerting. 8.7, enable DNS query logging. So enable domain name system query logging to detect host name lookups for known malicious domains. So uh, whenever we're exchanging traffic with a known malicious domain, uh, this control is asking us to configure our anti-malware protection or solution or software or device so that we have the uh, domain name system query logging enabled. And 8.8, .8, enable command line audit logging. So this control is telling us, enable command line audit logging for command shells, such as Microsoft PowerShell and Bash, so that whenever uh, uh, something is happening on the command line, which is out of the ordinary, that also creates an audit log. Um, that's all for, for this module. And I'd like to, like to mention um, at the end of this module that, uh, the mechanism to configure the malware defenses and to design the malware defenses is also obviously very important. And we need to look at the architecture of our enterprise and make sure that the malware detection is available in an appropriate manner at the edge, and especially when we are connecting outside the organization um, to an extranet or connecting to the outside world through the internet, and also you need to make sure that the systems or workstations, when they're connecting to the data center, the protection of the servers is there against the systems. So sometimes what happens is that the firewalling is all, only at the edge, and the users inside the enterprise, they can all go in uh, through the distribution switch um, or the uh, access switches, and they can access the data center switches as uh, servers, and there is no malware protection or there is no um, IPS, intrusion prevention, um, or there is no filtering or firewall filtering because that is all available at the edge. What about people accessing th through the intranets or people um, or computers accessing from the access uh, network or from the computers or workstations? When they access the data center, there may be no protection available. So you have to look at the, uh, all the architecture. And also, like we said in this module, there's very advanced features because the attacks are now very advanced. So you need to really look and study in depth for these particular features and enable them on your malware protection. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.